Hey guys! So, construction is one of the oldest, most complex, and most dynamically growing industries. Since the time of the pyramids, people have created genius, insane, grand architectural and engineering projects. Sometimes it requires working in unexpected and unwelcoming places. However, for thousands of years, everything we built was on the surface. Fixing a car or building a fence for your home isn't that hard anymore. Usually just one more or less prepared person can handle the task. However, what if you needed to repair a huge passenger ship or tanker? The weight of giant cruise ships can reach 150,000 tons, so you can't just take it to a service center. These tasks seem much more difficult, especially if you add the tiny detail that it must be done on site in the water. Many people are interested in how bridges are built when their supports are so deep in the water. Do the builders go down to set up what they need? The issue is, in most cases, you can't just get up and hammer a support beam into the bottom of the sea or a river to hold up your entire design. It would be too simple to work. For it to be successful, you need to approach it cleverly. Humans invented cofferdams for these situations. They are used to repair river or ocean transports, to build bridges, and to lay pipelines underwater. A cofferdam is a temporary waterproof shell built in the water. Now, most people, including me, probably haven't heard of cofferdams, but they are what are used to build the most complex bridges that can't be built otherwise. To build underwater, that section must first be dried. That is why cofferdams were invented. Cofferdam, when translated from Dutch, roughly means trunk or box. It's a shipbuilding term for a narrow hallway that separates spaces on a ship. Over time, it has come to be used in construction where it is a structure made of waterproof material that facilitates going down to the seafloor to build something. To go down, first you need to build and install the cofferdam, which is very expensive and complex. You must avoid errors in the design and installation since that could floor your tool, as well as kill your workers. Cofferdams are used when building bridges or dams that are at the water's surface, but have their base deep underwater. Working on a temporary structure might seem fairly dangerous, but don't worry, since it is only used in standing water. The chances of the cofferdam being damaged are minimal. So the process of creating a dry section is long and difficult. First, the bridge towers of the proper size are put where they need to be. The coffer dam is either built on site or is lowered to the ocean floor once it's made. Then, the water is pumped out of it so workers can begin repairing a ship or building bridge supports. Before building a coffer dam, engineers come up with a design, analyze the soil, and consider the seasonal temperature, as well as the strength of storm and ice attacks. The unusual waterproof structure is carefully examined to assure that no workers would be harmed during operations. A smaller version of this system is used in construction as well, called a caisson. A caisson is a special working space without a bottom that is set up at the construction site and protects workers from gas or liquid. They are installed in wells or sewers in rural homes. Currently, this technique is considered the most modern and is used to clean oil spills, expand water canals, and build bridges over rough, broad rivers. The construction of a modern bridge is both science and art. Any underwater project begins with surveying. This entails choosing the best place where opposite banks are the closest to each other. That's right, builders still try to build bridges across the narrowest places. When possible, the distance between opposite banks can be decreased by filling in additional land. Then, the water current is evaluated. Sometimes builders must artificially make the water deeper 
to make the water flow without any obstacles. This is usually done by dredgers. Then they begin to search for the best places to build bridge supports. First, they see if there are suitable sandbars on site. If there aren't, they are made artificially. Ones that are present naturally are reinforced. Sometimes they might even create entire artificial islands. They build the end supports first. They are often still on land, not underwater yet. It gets to be the most interesting when the bridge is being built over something very deep. One of three methods is used to build the supports in those situations. The first is the simplest. They drill the supports into the water using special construction equipment. Special construction barges and ferries are used for this. First, the ships go to the construction site to make a waterproof shell out of Larsen sheets. It creates a leak-proof ditch that isolates part of the area. The shell is reinforced and then the water is pumped out. The supports are drilled into the area based on the shell's shape. Then it needs to be reflooded and the sheets need to be removed. The second is the most complex. The construction of bridge supports dryly requires temporarily redirecting a river. When the construction is done, the river is put back where it was. This is done with dredgers and temporary dams. The third is most technical. It uses closed working spaces without bottoms, caissons. It's very similar to the first method. The only difference is instead of building an open shell, it's a closed air bubble at the construction site. Workers can move freely inside the caisson and their equipment works normally. Caissons can be buried and gradually lowered. There are special gates to remove soil from under the base. When the bridge supports are finished and filled with concrete, the caisson is flooded and removed. By the way, the name caisson disease that divers, mountain climbers, and astronauts suffer from comes from these construction caissons used to make bridges. The first time tons of people had caisson disease was during the construction of the Brooklyn Bridge in 1883. Because the early caissons weren't perfected yet, tons of workers suffered from the disease. Even with their size and expense, cofferdams are single-use. After the construction is finished, they are flooded and a new one is built next to it. This is done when building bridge supports. Sometimes coffer dams are dismantled and the pieces are used. Usually, coffer dams are made out of strong steel alloys. However, today, inflatable coffer dams have been made that can be reused. It is the most modern development in bridge and dam construction. Today, Coffer dams are used in both civil and military construction. They were used to expand the new Panama Canal, to clean up the aftermath of the Fukushima disaster, to build bridges across the wild and wide Mississippi, Hudson, and Ohio rivers, to clean up the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico, and to build gates on most dams. They are also used often to repair large civilian and military ships. Advanced construction solutions let us build temporary underwater spaces that are suitable for builders and for buildings too. There are underwater restaurants, museums, and even hotels in many countries. Well, that's all for today. Be sure to leave a like and comment if this video is interesting. Tell me what you learned today. And uh, we'll see you again next time.